going to introduce our all new Zero T Punch today. I'm very excited about it. But before I do, I want to take you on a history lesson regarding FUE. You see, back in 2002, I first learned about FUE from speaking with Spencer Coburn and watching the hair loss forums. A new procedure called the Woods Technique at that time had sprung up in Australia and patients all over the world were really excited about this procedure because this new procedure allowed patients to avoid the strip harvest, incision, and the resulting strip scar for the very first time. You see, I didn't realize how many patients had not undertaken a hair transplant procedure at that time because they were afraid of the strip procedure and they didn't like the strip scar. But I found out. Furthermore, for the first time, we were able to remove body hair with minimal scarring and we found that the body hair worked very well in some patients, but not so well in others. Now, beard hair is an exception. It seems to be much more consistent across the board with all patients. The problem in 2002 was that no one in the world knew how to perform FUE, except Dr. Woods. So I got on a plane, went to Australia, and I hoped that he would show me, but he refused. Several of us were working on a technique at that time, including Bill Rassman, Bob Bernstein, Rob Jones, Paul Rose, and Alan Feller. But no one had perfected the procedure and no one had the tools we needed to perform FUE. In October of 2002, Bill Rassman and Bob Bernstein published a paper defining the procedure we call today follicular unit extraction, which used to be the Woods Technique. Now this is FUE today. The paper essentially stated that only 25% of patients were candidates for FUE. And frankly, based on their accepted follicle transection rates that oftentimes exceeded 20%, I'm not sure any of their patients, their early patients, were actually candidates for FUE at that time. And so we none of us knew what to do or how to do it. None of us had the tools. There was no place you could buy them. None of the instrument companies had any idea how to perform this procedure or what to do it with. We didn't know whether to rotate, oscillate, or just push a punch into the skin or use, use a needle to get the grafts out. So we had to develop it. And only two of us really developed this procedure, and it was Rob Jones and myself. In December of 2002, I did my first 2000 graft FUE case, but it was by no means a procedure that I had figured out at that time. By June of 2003, I had discovered a great technique for FUE. After spending thousands and thousands of hours perfecting the skills, the tools, and the methods needed to remove grafts. You see, many had theories on how to perform FUE, but no one had the technique, the tool, the method, or the know-how. So I had to figure it out, and so did Rob Jones. However, it took the marriage of theories with skills to perfect FUE. In 2003, our average follicle transection rate was 8%. By 2006, our average follicle transection rate was 2.57%. How did we get there? Well, we developed sharper punches with the more appropriate location for the cutting edge. We invented depth control, and we learned to use a variation in punch size matched to the patient in an effort to get the transection rate as low as possible. You see, another manufacturer today says he has much lower transection rates. 
of three to eight percent with his new tools. Well, we achieved this in 2006, but we achieved a better transection rate. Now, unless you are willing to modify your punch size, depth, and punch design, you will fail on some patients. Regarding instruments, this is where we started with our first device. These were rustic, noisy, but functional. We made the very first oscillating device in 2005. Now, we didn't use these in surgery, but we made others. And our devices worked. You know, Dr. Bujima wrote a paper on an oscillating device that was published in the Hair Transplant Forum in September 2006. He claimed to have a patent on this device and a trade name. However, he never made this device, and the motion profile he described would never work. Dr. Bujima did not make this device. He gave the rights to make this device to lead him a company located in Korea, and in, in exchange for making him a device, he gave them the rights to manufacture and sell this device to you. In every respect since then, LEADM has attempted to copy my motion profiles of my PCID and every other aspect of my PCID without success. This is where we are today. The PCID was the first device capable of both rotation and oscillation. It had an infinite number of variables for positions. However, it also carried a, quite a large price tag. You might recognize that I've spent far more than that price tag just developing this technology. Furthermore, our complex motion profile has numerous patent applications and some patents that have already been issued. And we also have a patent on the movement of punch into the skin with an actuator. It's similar to what some people call 4D FUE today. Now, compare our handpiece from 2005 to our handpiece today. Our handpiece today is exquisite. It's lightweight, stainless steel, precise depth control, and the tip weighs only 42 grams. 42 grams. We designed this handpiece and we manufactured it right here in the USA. The good old USA. You see, the PCID is a workhorse. I've performed thousands of procedure with the very same machine I use today. And I made this machine in 2009. Now, in 2005, I could have pursued oscillation and a variety of different punch styles for oscillation, but I didn't really need to because I already had perfected my FUE technique. Over the years, I have trained many physicians all over the world. All of them have succeeded in developing the skills necessary to perform FUE. But some progressed much faster than others. Why did, why did these physicians succeed? All of them. Well, honestly, they were motivated. Motivation is the seed to success. You know, if you're not motivated to success, if you don't believe in something, success is much harder to achieve. And, and FUE is not a simple procedure. You really have to believe in it. You have to be focused. You have to be dedicated to it. You have to want to succeed. So that leaves us with the question, why do some people progress faster than others when learning FUE? You know, why, why do some physicians get it in a day and others take a little longer? 
What's the difference? You know, it's similar to snowboarding. It has a steep learning curve. You, you must start with motivation, however. Uh, because of the steep learning curve, you, you know, you have to accept failure while maintaining your motivation. Uh, you're going to fall down. You're going to fall down a lot. And it's going to hurt. And you're going to go home sore. And you have to go back the next day. And you have to try again. And you have to maintain that, that motivation. Otherwise, you, you go right back to the skis, which are much easier to learn initially, but probably harder in the long run. You know, you might spend a whole week on the bunny slope while all your friends are on the, the fun slopes, the, the steep slopes. You know, snowboarding for me, it, it took a week. Yeah, I didn't catch on right away. But after a week, I did catch on. And on by the end of, by the, end of the next week, I was on the double black diamonds. It had a steep learning curve, but from there you take off. And FUE is much the same way. You know, not everybody catches on as quickly as other people. And so it, we, we really need a way to, to, uh, to help uh, shorten the learning curve for some people. You see, FUE is a, is a very delicate process with zero margin for error. Uh, a physician must have soft hands. Uh, you must be able to feel the slightest amount of resistance as you penetrate the skin. You have to feel that, that point where you stop, you know, where you meet just a little bit of resistance or where you need to change angle. Or, and, and if you get really light with your hands, you can even feel a hair being cut. And, and you can look at the tissue and you know when you did it right and when you did it wrong. It's a very delicate process. And, and you must be able to react, react quickly. And, and you have to let the punch do, do the work. You can't, you can't force that punch into the skin because if you do, it's going to change the angle of hair growth and you're going to get transection, usually complete transection. Um, so if you're heavy handed, which, you know, is common, or, you know, men are heavy handed, some women are heavy handed, uh, but, but it's going to make the learning curve a little longer. It's, you have to learn to be light and soft with your hands. And, and this comes very easy for some, but, but it's not so easy for others. And, and for some, the, the hand-eye coordination is, is just a little bit better. You know, some people are better shot or with a gun or a shotgun than others or with a bow and arrow. They just, they have that feel. And uh, so I was particularly interested in Dr. DeBroy's new punch because his punch seemed to shorten the learning curve for many physicians that I knew and some who had struggled with FUE in the past and, and found it challenging and difficult. And obviously motivation might have played a role, but, but, but I knew that, that some of these physicians really, uh, it was a big help to them. And, and so it really inspired me. And, uh, but if you look at our, our patent drawings from 2006, We'd already described this, this punch that Dr. DeVroy calls the trumpet punch. Uh, we called it the flare punch. And you see, I, I think it is very important to have many options to perform FUE because we will all find that sometimes one option works far better than most of the other options in some patients. This is because all patients are different. They're all different in their own way. And we need a variety of tools. We need a variety of instruments. We need a variety of methods in order to achieve success in the vast number of patients or overall. So with this in mind, let me introduce our all new Zero T punch. This is based on our 2006 patent drawings. This has our patented serrated tip design along with the flare we described in 2006. What is great about this punch? Well, it's made from hardened steel the best quality steel money can buy. 
The cutting edge is exquisitely sharp. It lasts longer. It cuts well, both with oscillation and rotation. And with the PCID, you can combine rotation and oscillation in the same cycle. You know, rotation is still, hands down, the fastest way to harvest FUE graphs in the world. Some harvest at rates over 40 graphs per minute with continuous rotation. They're very quick. And I've watched them do this with the PCID. You know, this new Zero T punch is the best punch of this type on the market today. Nothing will come close to this design. You know, we engineered every aspect of this punch. And we have, we have manufactured it in our facilities. And, and you can rotate. You can oscillate. And that's why it's the perfect match for the PCID, which we will find a way to make available to you if you want a workhorse that is dependable and the best match for your practice possible. It does everything and the variables are infinite with the PCID. If you pair the PCID with our standard serrated tip punch or our all new zero T punch, and you will be the perfect team to take on any FUE challenge you encounter. If you want us to find a way to marry these products to your practice, we will do this. We will help you. We will help you succeed in your practice. We will find a solution for you. Just let us know. We're here to help. We make great equipment. The Zero T Punch is fantastic. And hands down, the best of this variety of punch you will find in the world today.